Hey, everybody, welcome back to another fantastic edition of the His and Her Money Show, where we make it our business to help you take dominion over your money and your life. Thank you so much for tuning in because you could be elsewhere, but the fact that you are listening and watching us, we want you to know we are grateful to have your attention. And as always, we do our best to bring you the type of content that's life changing. So we always ask you to have your pen and paper ready or have your notes app open because it's not our goal to entertain you. It's our goal to equip you to take dominion over your money and your life. And you're going to be able to do that today because we have a very special guest waiting in the wings to educate us all because we talk a lot about money, wealth and budgeting and saving and investing. Sometimes we even get into a little faith conversation. So we got you financially getting better. We got you spiritually getting better, but there, there's another part to this equation. And what's the point of having your money together? What's the point of doing better spiritually if your physical self is not where it needs to be? And so that's what we're going to be tackling with today's episode. We have none other than Dr. Ian Smith, who was going to be talking to us about his new book, The Met Flex Diet, and just health overall, because we all could do better in this area. And that's why we were excited to bring this episode to you. So get ready because we all need this information so that we can take the principles of financial stewardship and actually enjoy them. So let's get Dr. Ian on so we can learn all about what he has to share with us today. Hey, Dr. Ian, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hey, Tyler, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be with you. We, I mean, we are glad to have you here. Uh, my wife and I have been fans of yours for a very long time and the work that you've done in the various spaces that you've been in. I mean, you're a New York Times bestselling author. You've been on, I don't know, 5011 TV shows from, from, from Steve Harvey to Rachel Ray to, to Celebrity Fit Club to The Doctors. And this is book number 24 that you have written. And so I'm curious how did you even get to this play? I mean, 24 is a lot of book. 24 is a lot of writing, sir. So that means you have a deep passion for this subject. Where did it come from? Well, that's the key is passion, right? And um, I try to tell my kids that one of the important things in life is to find passion and pursue your passion. And that goes for everything. That goes in relationships, at work, at play. It doesn't matter. And so I've always had a passion for writing. I've always been a book lover, reader, uh, since I was a little kid, love books. Uh, and so my love of books really naturally evolved into me wanting to write things that I also love to read, right? It, you know, it's emulation. And so if I'm reading these great books, well, hey, one day could I write books that have the same kind of impact on others that books have had on my life? And that really got me into the mental space that one, that I want to write books, and two, that I can write books. And so it's just been a natural evolution for me to write books, given my um, love of books as a kid. Also, I think that I like to communicate with people, and I communicate on television, radio, podcasts, and I communicate through my books. So uh, I'm always looking for ways to communicate effectively uh, with my audience. Awesome. Uh, my wife and I were known for the money stuff. You're known for the health stuff. I'm curious, when you hear the phrase, your health is your wealth, what would you say? How would you expand upon that? What would be your reaction to that phrase? Well, first of all, I heard that expression um, many years ago. Um, in fact, the person I'd heard it from, I won't say that person is, but the person had said, a rich man's best friend is his health. Um, and that stuck with me. Uh, as a younger person. Um, but when I hear that expression, um, I think people don't take the time to really understand that statement. You can be wealthy, you can be well-educated, um, you can be famous, but if you don't have your health together, then how can you enjoy all of those things that you have? Um, and so I think people look at health as a luxury, not as a necessity. And my argument is that to have a happy, quality, long life, you need to be healthy in order to do that. 
And so for me, it's number one. Um, I don't obsess over health, but I am consistent about trying to be healthy. Not perfect, by the way. Um, I, not everything I do or eat is the healthiest of things, but in general, I try to lead a healthier life because I know that that will contribute to me being able to enjoy life more and having a fuller life. So for you, um, you run the gamut of helping people in this arena from celebrities to everyday people. Are there some commonalities between people who get a hold of your teaching and those who don't see the longevity and the results that they desire? Well, it's interesting. I kind of just stumbled upon helping celebrities uh, through the show Celebrity Fit Club. But the way I approached that show, and it was wildly popular, the way I approached that show was, even though I was speaking to the celebrities and helping the celebrities, my thought and perspective was, I was focused on the millions of people who were watching the show. I was talking to them through the celebrity. And so while I was helping the celebrity, my focus really was, what can I convey that the average person at home would be able to take and bundle and use in their own life. Uh, and I think that that's, that's kind of been my guide is that um, I want to help the everyday person. I grew up, you know, my mom had three jobs. She was a single mom. So we struggled. I watched her struggle. I watched her succeed and overcome. And so that is always part of my DNA. And so when I am trying to create programs or when I'm writing my novels, my fiction, I'm always thinking about and I don't say average in a, a pejorative way, but I'm thinking about the average person, someone who has bills to pay and maybe stressed out and is running and gunning and doesn't have a lot of free time. How can my programs, how can my stories um, enlighten or um, help the lives of the average person? Okay, so this is your life's work is for the average person. So somebody might hear about your new book, The Met Flex Diet, and hear this term, metabolic flexibility, and they'd be like, surely Dr. Ian is not talking to me. That sounds like something for the muscle and fitness subscriber, not the average everyday person. So what does that term mean? And is this a conversation that everybody should be tuned into? Uh, well, your last question is absolutely. And let me then go to the, the previous question. The way I found this term was so many people were hitting me up on Instagram and Facebook and they were saying, hey, Dr. Ian, I'm, I'm working out well, I'm eating what I think is well, but I still can't get the number on the scale to move. And I'm like, well, what is going on? So I'm doing my research and I come across a term called metabolic flexibility. I had no idea what it was. Let me give you an analogy of what metabolic flexibility is like. Imagine a hybrid car. A hybrid car has a battery and it has gas hybrid. So when the battery runs down, then the gas takes over as the energy source. And so it has two energy sources that are available and the car is able to use both. Let's take the gas powered car only. If you only have a car that is operated on gas, when the tank is empty, the car stops and you have to refill. In the hybrid car, the battery wears down, the gas kicks in. The hybrid car is metabolically flexible because it can use whatever fuel or energy source is available. The gas only car is metabolically inflexible because it can only use one type of fuel, which is gasoline. Now, transfer that to the body. The body has two important fuels that it likes to use. It likes to use carbohydrates and it likes to use fats. Those are fuel sources for our energy. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people can only burn carbs well and not fats, or they can burn fat well and not carbs. They are metabolically inflexible. Their metabolism is stuck. The switch is stuck. What this program in the Metflex diet does is it tries to unstick your metabolism and to teach your body how to burn both carbs and to be able to burn fats, just like the hybrid car. Hybrid car says, I can do battery, electric, I can do gas. Well, our body has to be able to say, I can do carbs and I can do fats. So when people say to me, I'm on a no carb diet, I say to them, that is very nutritionally unsound and unproductive because 
Carbs are considered to be a macronutrient. Everyone has heard that term before. And the reason why we call them a macronutrient is because the body needs them in macro supply, large supply. So you need carbs. So the idea that you don't need carbs or you shouldn't eat carbs is ridiculous. Now you should eat good carbs and the right carbs, but the body needs to be able to see carbs and process carbs. The body also needs fat, by the way. You need fat. Fat is part of our cell membrane. Every cell's membrane has fat in it. So we do need our share of fat. So how do you teach the body to be able to sit down to a carbohydrate rich meal like pasta and burn that well, and then sit down to steak or a burger or salmon and to be able to burn those fats well? How do you teach your body to do that? And that is what the Metflex diet does. Why do we need to be burning both? Because some people, like you said, more likely than not are burning one or the other, and they don't have that ability to, to, what does that do for us by following your methodology and getting to the place of being flexible? Like what, how does that translate into our everyday life? Well, think about it like this. Are you going to go the rest of your life without eating carbs, your entire life? Are you going to be able to not have bread, pizza, pasta, a cookie, something with car fruit, which are carbs, vegetables have carbs. Are you going to really be able to live your whole life without eating carbs? The answer is no. At some point, no matter how much you're restricting yourself now, there's going to come a time where you're going to eat a carb. When you eat that carb, how is your body going to respond well to it if your body's not accustomed to processing a carb? So you have to teach your body how to be able to process and burn carbs in an efficient manner, just like fats. Some point in your life, you're going to be eating fat. Even salmon, a very healthy fish, is full of omega-3 fats, which are very healthy fats. But it's a fat nonetheless. And so your body has to know how to process that fat. If your body's not exposed to it, how will it know? How will it become adept at processing the fat? So the idea is that people are going to eat carbs and they're going to eat fats. And their body is going to need to be able to process both of them. If you can't process them, then it's going to cause weight gain. It's going to cause you feeling bloated. It's going to cause all types of what we call metabolic sequelae, which means all types of metabolic situations because you're not processing the carb or the fat well. And so this is why um, we're trying to improve our flexibility so we can handle uh, the different macronutrients that we're going to be, see, uh, going to be seeing on a daily basis. Um, one of the results that came from uh, the pandemic is there are a lot more people that work from home now than ever before. So that means, I guess, on the surface, there are a lot more people that are sitting behind desk sedentary than any other time before. Um, being that a lot of people listening and watching may find themselves in that very scenario, why is um, your approach something that they should take serious um, as opposed to maybe when they were in a position where they were moving and grooving all day, going from one place to the next? Well, part of the Metflex diet, a part of it is exercise. Um, and it's realistic exercise. It doesn't ask you to belong to a gym, though you can, I like gyms. Uh, it doesn't say you have to work out for an hour and a half every day until you're knocked out, nope. What it says is between 20 and 30 minutes, about four days a week, you can divide up the exercise into the morning and night, you can split up your, your minutes. Um, but the program says you need to move. All the studies show that if you want to lead a healthier, longer life beyond weight loss, by the way, it's obviously it's essential for weight loss, but just for overall health, for lower blood pressure, for lower blood sugar levels, to lower your cholesterol levels, to improve your cognitive function, your brain function, your memory, you need to move. And so the great analogy is a, a mechanic once said to me, I was talking about a Porsche and sports cars. And he was explaining to me that the worst thing you can do with a Porsche or another sports car is to not drive it. And I said, that doesn't make sense. I said, if you don't drive a sports car, you keep it in the most pristine condition, right? He says, absolutely not. He said, by not driving it, by not starting the engine, by not getting the oil circulating, by not getting the gas pump moving, he says, things start to break down. The seals start to loosen up. The rubber starts cracking. You have all kinds of major problems. You need to run it. Same thing with our bodies, is that our bodies are much greater and much more complicated than a sports car. And if we don't move it and use it 
and exercise it in a way to keep everything circulating, then we start to break down. So physical activity, exercise, working out, whatever you want to call it, movement, it's essential to any program that is saying to you, you're going to lose weight and you're going to maintain that weight and be healthier. Now, I've heard you say that uh, one of the, the most, if not the most optimal ways to get movement or to conduct it is through uh, HIT. Can you explain what that is? And can you give some examples of how we can pull that off? Yeah, so HIT, H-I-I-T stands for High Intensity Interval Training. Um, in the back of the book, um, I have illustrations of exercises and exercise plan for you. So in the back of the Metflex diet, you'll see illustrations about how to do certain exercises and instructions. The basic concept of HIIT, H-I-I-T, is that you are going to exercise in a manner in which you are going to have periods of high exertion alternating with periods of low exertion or rest. Let me give you an example. Instead of walking on a treadmill, at 3.0 miles per hour on a flat surface for 20 minutes, I rather you turn up the MPH, maybe instead of being at two, go to four. And I would prefer you to walk at a faster pace for 30 seconds and then rest or walk slow for 30 seconds and then turn it back up for 30 seconds and rest. So it's this alternating of high exertion with low exertion that is what HIT is. And the beauty of HIT is you can do it with almost any exercise. You can do it with jumping jacks, jumping rope. Um, you can do it, you know, riding a bicycle, using a tread, uh, a stairmaster. All these things can you can adapt to a HIT workout where you are doing high exertion and rest, high exertion, low exertion. Uh, and we have seen in studies that that improves your metabolic flexibility, but it also burns more calories. And after a hit session, by the way, you can burn calories up to 24 hours after the exercise is over. So and also in your book, in this vein, you talked about not just what to eat or how to exercise, but the timing of it is important as well. You can't just do things randomly. So can you help us understand why doing eating certain times, exercising at a certain times also lends to us getting into a better health position? It's not always what you eat. Sometimes it's when you eat it and how you eat it. Uh, we have a Facebook group with a thousand people in it. Um, we had a thousand when we first started. It's housed 15,000 people who are following the Netflix diet. Uh, and I gave a thousand people the plan early so they can give me feedback on it. But um, their weight loss average um, was 14 to 16 pounds in six weeks. Some lost up to 24 pounds uh, and they lost eight to 10 inches. Uh, in six weeks. And so I encourage anyone who's watching and or listening to join our group on Facebook. I'm in it every day helping people. I do two coaching sessions a week, uh, Zoom sessions a week for free. So the name of that group is the name of the book, Met Flex Diet. But the point is that what people have to understand is that when you are trying to incorporate uh, better lifestyle decisions uh, into uh, your life, and into what you're doing, um, that you have to have some organization and you have to have some preparation. And I think a lot of people just say, okay, I'm going to eat better. I'm going to move better. Um, and they don't have a real plan. They don't have a real strategy. And weight loss is not easy. I'm the first one to say that. But you have to have a plan to attack it. You know, same thing with, with business and money. And you're trying to accumulate wealth. You just can't say, okay, I want to have a lot more money. Uh, I want to make more money. Okay, that's a good goal. But what is your plan to do that? You know, how are you going to save your money? Where are you going to invest your money? What do you, how are you going to get a job that's paying you more money? You have to have an overall plan. And I think that one of the problems that people have is they go into this idea of, I want to do better or get more but they just have loose ideas. They don't have any real direction. And so I think that one of the strategies that people enjoy in the Netflix diet is that it gives them direction. It's customizable. It's a daily plan where you have options to choose. Um, there are two weeks of carb loading with protein and four weeks of what's called cyclical keto, which means you cycle in and out of keto. So I don't believe in long-term keto, but it's short-term keto, carb load, short-term keto, carb load. But this is what the plan looks like. And I think people would benefit 
more greatly if they had. I'm not saying I have the only plan, by the way. There are lots of great plans out there. But I'm saying you got to have a plan at least to get started until you can understand how to make better decisions uh, and turn it into a lifestyle. Imagine a life where your money isn't strangled by mortgage payments. Imagine what you could do when you don't have to send them money that you work so hard for. Come get simple, powerful, and real solutions to eliminating monthly mortgage payments forever. America's number one money couple presents Crush My Mortgage. In this exclusive course, you will be equipped with strategies to help you move faster toward the promised land of owning your house free and clear. Learn strategies to help you in the areas of payment acceleration, extra income generation, and wealth creation, all to help you crush your mortgage. Visit crushmymortgage.com and get started today. Join us on the path to power, freedom, and legacy. That's crushmymortgage.com. Better decisions, which will equal a better lifestyle. I've heard you teach before that, you know, you can't really see the results that you want whether that's you starting to go to the gym or you starting to eat differently, if your mind isn't there first. So how can we mentally get there? Cause we might know, like we can feel like, okay, I need to do better. Like I, I need to lose. Like, I, I, I need to get ready for this trip or I, I, I need to do that. I, I know I need to make a change, but that doesn't mean that I'm mentally ready to make said change. How do you coach people to get their mind right so that the rest will follow? Well, I wrote a book called Mind Overweight, and that book has no diet in it. It's a very small, tiny book that you can read in a short period of time that only works with and deals with what is above the neck and between the ears, your mind. Um, and so what people have to understand, and once again, this is where weight loss uh, really applies not to just losing weight, but also to life in general. There are a lot of similarities uh, to life journeys. People have to understand that a big part of what we face is mental. It's psychological. And you have to exercise your mind and tune up your mind just like you do anything else. And people kind of, they skip that. And they don't realize that people be, can be defeated before even starting something because their mind is not in the right place, because they don't have realistic expectations, because they don't realize that sometimes in life, you have to get go through the darkness to get to the light. If you have mental preparation and you say to yourself, this is a journey, this is not a sprint. I wanna own a house. I'm making $45,000 a year and I wanna own a house. And I know in order to own this house, I have to save X number of dollars, okay? That's not gonna happen in two or three years. But mentally I have to say to myself, that over X number of years, if I stick to my plan, I will be able to reach my goal of purchasing this house. But your mind has to lead. Because if you say to yourself, well, I want to buy this house in two years, but you're making $45,000 and you're trying to buy a $300,000 house, those numbers don't compute. And so you are at a loss before you even start it because your mind's not right. So I think that the mental part of weight loss as it applies to life in general is exquisitely important. People disregard it, they don't pay attention to it uh, and they don't get it right first. And so when they do do a plan because their mind's not in the right place, they don't get out of it what they want. And and for full disclosure, I literally just ordered that book as you were talking about it, Mind Overweight. We'll be sure to have a link to Mind Overweight, as well as the Metflex diet in the show notes of this episode. So another back back to the Metflex diet, another key component um, in your book is you talk about fasting. Um, some people have a, an, an idea of what it is. Some people, it's kind of trendy. So maybe people have more knowledge of it than, than they did in five, seven years ago. But what does it mean for you? What does it mean for this journey to becoming uh, metabolic? Uh, metabolically flexible. I'm trying to say it right. Like I got a doctorate degree and I don't. <laughs> there you go. That was good. You did it. You did it. Um, well, it's interesting because fasting is not starvation. Okay. People see the word intermittent fasting. I'm going to starve. Absolutely not. 
There are many types of intermittent fasting strategies. I use three of them in the Metflex diet because they work differently, um, or at least their methods are different, but the results tend to be similar. And the idea behind fasting, just so you know, overtly is to burn fat. What people don't know is that fat is a storage form of energy. So our fat is really energy. And even though we don't like fat, we don't like the way it looks or how it feels, it does have a purpose, but we need to make that purpose uh, manifest. So um, when you eat extra calories and you don't burn those calories off, the body has to do something with the extra energy. And that is how your fat cells grow. It stores it as fat. Well, in fasting, what we're really doing is we are driving the body into our fat stores to break the fat down, to use the fat for energy rather than using the food energy. The body would always prefer to use energy from food first because it's easier for the body to eat food, digest the food, take the nutrients out of the food and use it and convert it to energy. That's an easy process, the easier process for the body. The second thing the body likes to do is the body likes to use the stored glucose that we have, something called glycogen. And that is stored glucose, which is another source of energy. So we eat all the food, we use that energy. We go to our stored energy, we use all of that. Now what do we use? We use fat. Fat's the last thing we use. The reason why it's the last thing we use because it's hard to do it. It's not, the body doesn't want to go through the energy it takes to break fat down and use it for energy, but the body will do it if that's the only available energy source. And so when you're doing intermittent fasting, you are having periods of eating with periods of no eating or fasting. And it's during that fasting period that you are sending your body into your fat stores and breaking down the fat and using that for energy. And that is how you start shrinking. And that is why with intermittent fasting, so many people are able to burn fat so well is because their fat now, instead of sitting there and on your organs or under your skin, your fat now becomes a fuel source for the rest of your body. So there are three different types of intermittent fasting I use in the book. I use TRF, time-restricted feeding. I use the 5-2 method. And I use something called alternate day fast. You probably have heard of TRF, time-restricted feeding. That's where you take your 24-hour day and you divide it up into an a eating or feeding window and a fasting window. Someone will say, I start eating at 10 in the morning. I stop at 6. That's what they're saying. They're saying, that's my eating period, and then I fast. That's one method. The other method is the 5-2 method. You take five days of relatively normal eating. And you have two days of low calorie eating and you take those two days. They can't be next to each other, but you space them out over the course of the week. And the last method I use in the book is called alternate day fast. And what that means is this. You have one day of relatively normal eating, then 500 calories, normal eating, 500 calories. And so it's alternating when you're having low calorie and normal calorie day. Those are three of the big styles of intermittent fasting that are extremely effective. And in the book, I use all three of them because people respond differently to different strategies. And also people get excited to be able to have a different way of doing it. They don't wanna do the same thing all the time. So it's a nice variety. Um, I wanna talk about kind of like a, um, a heart posture, maybe even a mental posture that I've heard you speak of. And I've even heard you talk about how you teach it to your kids about just always remaining a student, always posturing yourself to learn new things. And so some people may be sitting like, man, I've tried this, tried that, it didn't work, or I fell off, I couldn't stick to it. Um, why do we not let maybe some past situations that didn't go our way negatively affect us now? How do we keep that heart of willing, be, still being willing to learn something new? Well, I've always believed that, and this comes to me being a curious kid, that it's great to be a lifelong student. My grandfather would always say, no matter how much you know, there's still a whole book you don't know. And that was his way of saying that you can never learn everything and that you should still keep acquiring knowledge. And so I think that people um, need to be a little uh, more vigorous in their pursuit of learning. I'm not saying you have to read the things I read. 
You can have different interests. You don't have to read about scientific papers like I do. I find them interesting. You may not. But maybe you like finances. You want to understand the economy. I think in general, speaking of life, I think that people would be more successful if they read more and they try to understand concepts more. What is inflation? What does it mean by the prime rate for mortgages? Why do mortgages go up and go down? What is the stock market? What is a stock? What does it mean when the stock market is bad? So people have to understand, we hear all these words. We hear words like protein and fats and carbohydrates. What are they? Once again, you don't have to read for hours and hours to understand them at the level that I understand them or understand business and economics the way you understand them. But the beauty of the internet now versus before when you had to go to the library and do research that way, the beauty now is that these answers are at your fingertip. And I think that people need to be less lazy, less lazy in accepting terms and concepts that they really don't understand, but they hear all the time. They should challenge themselves to try to understand it a little better. And I think, by the way, if more people did that, and had a greater understanding of these concepts and these terms that we throw around on TV and on radio and in person, I think people would be more successful and be more engaged because they understand it better. Understanding, my grandpa always say, understanding between two people is a beautiful thing. People don't understand things. Man, so good, so good. And you have this Facebook group for uh, the book and you have 15,000 people in there. I know you shared earlier, like people have lost, you know, 14, 20, 24 pounds um, in a six week period by, because your program, this particular program is six weeks long. I'm curious, anybody like giving testimonies around like how life has changed, how life has improved as a result of doing this work? Those to me are my best testimony. I know people are attracted by the shiny number. I lost 20 pounds, 18 pounds. That's great. We have all, all that in the group. But when people say to me things like I went, to, one lady said, I went to my doctor's office and he did my blood test and said to me, what are you doing? Because your blood cholesterol levels are so low, we got to reduce your medication. I mean, that to me is gold. That is my oxygen. When someone says to me, you know, I was able to walk a certain distance that I could not walk before without getting winded. Someone said to me, I was in the airport, I was running late for my flight. And had I not lost weight, and gotten better fitness, I would have missed my flight, but I was able to rush to the gate. Those kind, we call them NSVs, by the way, non-scale victories. I love the non-scale victories. And in the group, I spend hours looking at the posts of people talking about non-scale victories as well as the scale victories, but looking at what and how their lives have been truly impacted by making a change. Listen, no matter, no matter who you are, our life is finite, right? It's finite. Um, wealthy, uneducated, famous, doesn't matter. We're all going to go. Okay. The question becomes for whatever time you have on earth and neither of us knows how long it's going to be, but however long you have on earth, how good do you want that life to be? How much quality do you want in that life? What kind of memories do you want to create? If you say that I want to live the best life possible, then you need to make that a priority and make decisions make decisions that are going to lead you to that best life. You can't say on one hand, I want a better life. I want a long life. I want to feel good. And then turn around and treat yourself poorly or not learn about things. Those are contradictory. I love how you write in your book because it feels very accessible. Um, you don't leave us hanging. You give us exercise. You give us recipes. You give us meal plans. So can you talk about the doability of this, I don't even know if that's a word. You got all the degrees, so you let me know. The doability of the Metflex diet. I like that word. Uh, we're going to make it a word if it's not. Um, yeah, when I write my plans, uh, and this goes back to Celebrity Fit Club days. Well, let me use Celebrity Fit Club since you mentioned how much you like it. When I first started doing the Celebrity Fit Club, they hired me to be the medical expert and to give the diet and nutrition advice. And I gave them one of my first books. It was called The Take Control Diet. And boy, did I think that book was wonderful. I thought that book was fantastic. It taught you about calories and fats and proteins. 
It told you why you need fiber, all these great scientific principles. I give it to the celebrities and one week they come back on set and they say, Dr. Ian, we love you. And we think that you're really smart and you know what you're doing, but can you just tell us what to eat and when to eat it? And after I got out of my feelings, because I thought this book was the greatest thing ever, after I got out of my feelings, I understood what they were saying to me. They were saying, what you've written is great information, but this is what we need, and this is what will work for us. We need a, a down and dirty plan. Tell us what to eat it and when to eat it, and we're going to do it. And so I then wrote a diet for them on the spot. Every week I would write this diet book, uh, this diet plan for them, uh, because they didn't want to use the book I'd given them. And so they start losing lots of weight, lots of weight. And I would just tell them, this is meal one. These are your options. Meal two, your options. And they were fine with that. They're like, this is what we need. Just give us the information. So they lost a lot of weight that season. And my brother convinced me to take those weeks that I had typed spontaneously and turn it into a book. And so I said, ah, no, no one's going to buy that book. It's not even, you know, it's, not, it's just a plan. There's not a lot of information. You know, it's not like the other book I had. He said, trust me, it works and people are going to want to follow that plan. So I finally listened to him, thank goodness. And I put the book together and called it The Fat Smash Diet. And that book was number one for 20 weeks on the bestsellers list, week after week after week. And I learned my lesson that the celebrity said to me, and I give them credit for that, Dr. Ian, just tell us what to eat and when to eat it. And so I use that in all my plans, the doability of it. That is, can people take this book, in this case, the Matt Flex Diet, can they open it and be able to understand what I'm telling them to eat, be able to afford what I'm telling them to eat, be able to enjoy the food that I'm telling them to eat, which is why there's pizza, there's pasta, there's steak, there's alcohol on certain days, yes, alcohol, and there are carbs. So yes, the doability of the program is based in the lesson I learned many years ago, which is there is no value in writing a plan or a book that people can't relate to and people can't follow for the long term in order to execute to get results. Fantastic. The name of the book is The Met Flex Diet. Dr. Ian, can you tell everybody um, a little bit more that we haven't discussed about what they'll find in the pages, where they can pick up a copy and how they can keep up with you on social? Yes, you will find a six week plan. Every day is spelled out for you. It will give you instructions on what you can choose. So there's always options. It will give you some exercise with some options that you can do using the exercise in the back of the book, or you can do it at home if there are other exercises that you like in the gym. Uh, it also will have 50 recipes that are delicious, that are simple, that are easy uh, and very affordable. Um, and, you know, listen, join the group. Uh, the group is the name of the book, Netflix Diet. There's another group that you should not join. That's a fake one. The one that says Netflix Diet Plan is not my group. So make sure you join Netflix Diet and look for my picture on the top of the page. That's me. Um, and follow me on social. Uh, I do a lot of stuff on Instagram at Dr. Ian Smith. Spell the doctor out, I-A-N Smith. And if you are a lover of fiction and you like mysteries, uh, my new mystery comes out on May 30th. It's called The Overnights. And it's book number three in my Ash Kane PI series. It's an African-American private investigator in Chicago who takes on uh, very uh, select cases in and around the city. Awesome. We'll be sure to have links to the books, to the group, the correct group, and your social media in the show notes of this episode. As we conclude and close this out, Dr. Ian, maybe someone who's on the fence. Um, again, they, they may be a little despondent. They know they need to make the changes. Um, they've attempted to make changes in the past. It hasn't worked. Or maybe it worked for a little while and uh, they reverted back to their old ways. Let's let's push them forward. Let's motive, let's let's help them get going one more time. What would you say to that person if they were right there with you, uh, maybe with their head down, wondering if they can make this happen? I would say to them first, make sure you understand your why. Why are you trying to do this? When you understand your why, then you move into your how. But the why has to come before the how. And above all of that has to be belief. You have to believe in yourself above all else, that regardless of what you encounter, 
that regardless of how difficult it may become, that you can succeed. If you have that belief in mind and you have your why and your how, and then you become consistent, that's the last piece of the puzzle. If you are consistent, not perfect, not perfect, no one's perfect, but if you make better decisions most of the time and you are patient in your results, the results will come. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Dr. Ian, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and share your wisdom with us today. I love talking to you. Thanks for the great interview. I hope to talk to you again. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope that you took good notes. If not, hit the rewind button and listen again because Dr. Ian dropped all kinds of nuggets of wisdom on us today. And his new book is called The Metflex Diet. It's linked up in the show notes. Get the book, walk out the plan, change your life because what's the point? Having wealth. If you don't have your health, we want you to have it all. We want you to enjoy it all. So please go get the book and get to work. That's all we got for this time, guys. It's been great. Until next time. Peace.